Huge update in our defamation lawsuit, Project Veritas versus New York Times. The New York Times has threatened our lawyers' other clients in an attempt to intimidate Project Veritas. The New York Times doesn't want their own response to our letter asking for a correction published. The New York Times thought threatening our lawyer would secure our silence, even though we never threatened to publish at the time. But now we're publishing the New York Times letter. You see, you cannot extort us. So the New York Times loses on the motion to dismiss, as you all know. And then just a few weeks ago, the New York Times published a front page hit piece on Project Veritas with the headline, Activists and Ex-Spies, said to have plotted to discredit Trump's enemies in government, including this thing about McMasters, which we did not do. The New York Times admitting it was, quote, unclear whether Project Veritas directed that. So following the hit piece, the New York Times sent two reporters to MSNBC to say Project Veritas was in fact targeting McMaster in direct contradiction to their own reporting by Adam Goldman and Mark Mazzetti saying, quote, it is unclear whether the group directed it. And what we saw was Project Veritas was working closely with a former British spy in order to entrap people within the Trump administration. So it was H.R. McMaster, the national security advisor. He was one target. Um, a group of activists on the right, Trump allies, who were funded by his donors, who recruited a former spy and other operatives to train people of Project Veritas uh, into subverting FBI agents, and even the National Security Advisor. The New York Times is literally contradicting themselves. So on May 19th, Libby Locke, our attorney in the case, wrote a letter to the New York Times, despite the Times reporters having, quote, begrudgingly admitted, unquote, and writing that, quote, there is no evidence supporting the notion that Project Veritas was actually involved in the alleged scheme, unquote, against NSA Director H.R. McMaster, Quote, other New York Times journalists soon began appearing on cable news shows to promote the story, and the process explicitly and definitively asserted that Project Veritas was behind the operation, unquote. Now, it's important to note the New York Times' own policy requires reporters to get permission from the New York Times to go on MSNBC. Also, from this letter that our lawyer sent the New York Times, quote, given that both Mr. Confessori and Ms. Bennett were prominently identified during their respective cable TV appearances as reporters for the New York Times, we of course assume that they were appearing in that capacity. So Project Veritas demanded the New York Times issue an immediate, prominent disavowal of Confessori's and Bennett's statements. So our lawyer asks the New York Times to print one sentence in that article, which reads, Project Veritas was not involved in and did not know about or fund this alleged scheme. So we're definitively saying we have nothing to do with this. The New York Times' David McCraw, he's the senior vice president and deputy general counsel of the New York Times, issues a response to our letter, which says, quote, not for publication. David McGraw writes in this letter, shockingly, quote, we appreciate your confirmation of the accuracy of the story. So he's making a snide remark there because the New York Times contradicted themselves. One of the two statements the New York Times made, either their st sentence in the New York Times print edition or the reporter's statements on the air, one of those has to be false. So McGraw is wrongly using flawed logic to say that we're claiming that one of those statements has to be accurate in the reporting. McGraw wrote, quote, I have reviewed with our editors your request for the addition of the sentence, and we do not believe that a change is warranted. Also, quote, your letter also raises concerns about two MSNBC broadcasts. Those concerns should be addressed to Gail Gove, general counsel of NBC. So either the New York Times confessori and Benner went rogue and went against the New York Times article, or the New York Times confessori and Benner were there officially, and McGraw, the general counsel, was too cowardly to acknowledge it. So on McGraw's letter, it says at the top right, quote, not for publication, and quote, privileged and confidential pursuant to federal and state law. He is wrong. Neither state nor federal law offer unilateral privilege or confidentiality of pre-litigation demand and response letters that don't contain a settlement offer. In fact, these kinds of letters are admissible as evidence of malice in a defamation lawsuit, which is what we're doing. Also, New York Times policy says all communication with New York Times is on the record. Again, if there weren't for double standards, 
there would be no standards at all when it comes to the New York Times. So our attorney Libby told McCraw we wouldn't abide by unilateral not for publication labels. And that is where the threat comes in. So after our attorney Libby tells McCraw we're not abiding by this, McCraw sends an email to Libby's male older partner at the law firm, a man named Tom Clare, and says, quote, just so you're not blindsided, now that your firm takes the position that a lawyer's letter to another lawyer and designated not publication is in fact publishable, we intend to ignore your designation of letters as not for publication going forward. McGraw goes on, quote, to the extent prior letters you sent designated not for publication are relevant to ongoing coverage, we will use them. While I am disappointed in your firm's position, I am sure you understand we both have to play by the same rules. What he's saying is if I publish this letter, then the New York Times is going to publish letters of clients that have nothing to do with this litigation, Project Veritas versus New York Times. They're going to affect different people in different cases because we decided to tell you this thing about these two MSNBC reporters who contradicted what was in the New York Times. Some might call this um, extortion. Some might call it um, blackmail. It almost seems mobster-like, this, especially this statement, we appreciate your confirmation of the accuracy of the story. I'm about to sue the two reporters who went on MSNBC and lied, maliciously so. Every time you put your pen to paper, you add facts to the malice issue. By not correcting what it is that you said, you are helping our case. And by doubling down on all the defamation, it really is kind of mobster-like. You, you are immune from being held accountable. You've never been held accountable until now. Oh, and um, the threatening letter and the uh, letter that you sent uh, Libby Locke as well, both of those, we just gave those to the judge on Monday. Oh, we also got lots of emails from inside the New York Times from litigation against the New York Times, and we intend to publicize those. You see, we're not going to be silenced or threatened or intimidated by your mob-like tactics. Justice delayed is justice denied. I look forward to deposing you. Snoop Dogg.